It's good to be here. I'm not. I'm not sure what I can uh, can add. Uh, I am a, a libertarian, so I'll add the, uh, the what I'll call the radical capitalist uh, perspective on this as best I can. And I'll start with a reminder that all of us are familiar uh, with what happens when we leave government alone. We we uh, we were not uh, awake uh, regionally, and we watched uh, our. Uh, community flood, and that was a result of failure by the federal government and failure by the local uh, oversight boards. And we understood the importance of what it meant to take action and get engaged. And I think I want to thank the, uh, the committee for raising this same issue because the signs are there. This catastrophe is, uh, is, 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 is right at our door. And that what they call the long run that, uh, that Keene said we're all dead in, we are now uh, living. We're alive for this, uh, for this long run. I'm going to start and just make two simple points. One is that if uh, it's just a, a, a fact of reality that if something can't go on forever, it won't. It's a saying we've all heard. I would also uh, say we all know that you cannot spend your way into prosperity. And I want to come back to those two points if I, if I could. Uh, Lincoln had a, uh, uh, a quote he said, uh, or a statement he said, if you call a tail a leg, if you call the tail a leg, how many legs does a dog have? And many would say five, and Lincoln would then say, no, a dog has four legs, and it doesn't change that fact by calling a tail a leg. And I think what we have um, in, in economics is that if you, if you call government spending stimulus, then somehow that's going to create prosperity. And then if you say, well, that's gotten a little worn, so let's change that and call government spending investment, and that'll call it. Well, n no, it really does matter that investment is done for the purpose of the productivity that's going to be created from it. And if it doesn't make economic sense, and it should be called waste, because that's what it is. It's either spending or, or waste. So I'm going to um, also ask the question, what causes poverty? Because it's a question we wrestle with a lot. And the answer is, uh, demonstrates how we think about it. When we answer that question, few of us would come up with the same answer that you get when you go to underdeveloped uh, countries. When you go to underdeveloped countries, they say nothing causes poverty. Poverty is the, lat is the natural state that exists until we produce something. So that moves you to the question, what causes prosperity? And I think that that's a different question because stable rules, freedom, uh, protection of property rights, and having a culture, a responsible culture and a productive culture are the, the answers there. We see a lot of criticism today and a lot of comments that uh, we've lost our manufacturing base, that manufacturing is declining. If I said that, that the population uh, in this industry, in an industry had, the, the, the population has increased by a full factor of, say, 20, and the number of people employed in the industry has reduced by half, you would say, well, that must be a dying industry. They must not be competitive. So I want to show you this, this chart that I have. Do we have that chart? Oh, yes, it's up. Um, this is, the, th this is the, the, the chart of the agricultural labor force from 1840 to, uh, to today. And if you say the population in 1840 was 17 million, which is, which is roughly right, the population today is uh, roughly 310 million uh, people, you'll see that we actually have half as many people employed in this sector. And yet, the, uh, the, the agricultural economy is stunningly productive. Now, what happened to those jobs? Those jobs are gone. Well, where did all the new jobs come from? In 1840, if you had said, made that projection, and we said, well, we better go protect these jobs. We better make sure we keep these jobs. What would have happened and what would our standard of living look like? So I think the, the, the simple point that I, that I want to make is that it's very important to, to look at the, what's the visible, the seen, and the unseen. And the spending creates short-term, immediate prosperity. I mean, short-term, immediate, concentrated wealth, jobs, benefit. But over time, what matters is individual freedom, protection of liberty, to allow the market to naturally adjust, because all the new jobs are going to be created 
from all of the displaced are going to be better jobs, it's going to be a better economy, it's going to be more prosperity, because if you look and compare our lifestyle in 1840 to our lifestyle today for the average person, it's tremendously different. So I'll, I'll, I'll close with that and uh, again thank, uh, thank the committee for, uh, for raising this and pushing this important issue.